Hello there, welcome back. How are you all doing today? So, I believe the time has arrived. The time, that is, of course, to discuss the single most top 10, all caps, you know, question mark, exclamation mark, controversial weapon in Team Fortress 2, excluding the other, like, 40 weapons. But this is the one we're discussing today. The Dead Ringer. Oh. Yeah, that's right. So, I've been holding off a little while on this one, because I think it takes a little bit more to make a video on than the other ones, and as you might be able to tell, this is a post-commentary, so I'll be putting on some normal gameplay on in the background while I speak about this, basically, because it'll take a little bit more brain power. So anyway, to begin, The Dead Ringer. Ooh, it's been around for quite a long time, and by quite a long time, I mean, I think as long as the Ambassador and the Cloak and Dagger, which are also very old, and it's gone through a lot of changes over the years. So, I'm not the man to read off of a script or a wiki, but I'm just gonna pull this data out of the top of my head, because that's the kind of man I am. Old Dead Ringer, long, long time ago. Everyone thought it was kinda shit in competitive. No one likes it, it was like, oh, I know it's, you can't get positioning, everyone, no one's gonna get your disguise, no one's gonna think you're feigning your death. And that's what it used to be. For a really long time, people thought the Dead Ringer as the feigning your death watch. And it's what it says in the description, I think. It says, like, instead of, you know, invisibility watch or motion-triggered invisibility watch with the cloak and dagger, I think it's just death feigning watch or something. That's what it was for a really long time. So for a long time, no one really cared about the fact that it had, like, a huge resistance. Back in the day, it was, like, 90 to 95%, I think. Really, really, really high percent. Um, there were old, old videos you might be able to find on YouTube of people having, like, three or four crit brass beast heavies shoot an invisible spy, and he just wouldn't die. Because uh, the way it used to be was you just had your super cloak forever. Super cloak being the thing that, once your dead ring is triggered, you have a huge buff. So one cool feature that you used to be able to do with the Dead Ringer was basically body block Ubers as spies. So an example, I probably won't be able to find an actual one, so we can pretend. But on the window one upward, combos used to like dropping out of there with an Uber. You could just stand there as an invisible spy and you'd waste like half of their Uber just by standing there and they couldn't get rid of you unless the Pyro air blasted you. And, uh, which they often wouldn't. This was back in the day when pyros would do a lot more, like, flanking. They wouldn't have four people drop out that window. You'd have the medic and the demo and maybe the heavy. The pyro would be somewhere else, you know, sitting on the car, air blasting stickies off of it or something. So, most of the time you just get away with it. You just stand in the window and you'd waste an Uber. It was a really, really fun feature. Unfortunately, over the years, people started to complain a lot more, and Valve noticed a lot more. I think there was a blog post where they showed the item percent equip rate, and instead of it being a third across all watches, it was something like, I think it was like an 80 or a 90 percent equip rate on the Dead Ringer. It was really high. No one used the Cloak and Dagger, like 1 percent used it. Everyone else used the Invis Watch, and this does not make sense because they should all be balanced, relatively. Like, they don't have to be perfectly 33%, but, you know, give us, like, a 60% equip rate on it, maybe, and it would have been a lot better. But anyway, Valve look at this, and they were like, oh god, that's way too much. They just nerfed the Christ out of it. It was actually useless. What they did was they made it so, I think you had a 50% resistance, and that was it. They just nerfed the Christ out of it. I don't think they really... The, the, the rest of the rebalance was unnecessary. Um, what this meant was it was completely useless. For, for about a week, and basically what it meant was if you were on about 50 health, you were probably going to die to everything. And the old Dead Ringer was you could survive on like 3 health from a rocket, it was ridiculous. So no one used it really, we tested it for a bit in Highlander and everyone was like, yeah, it just kind of incentivizes sitting behind your team, and then at that point, what's the point of having the Dead Ringer? It's kind of, it was stupid. And so Valve completely flip-flopped, and they added in what I think is the single worst, and uh, not single worst, by single worst I mean the single strongest aspect the watch has ever had. They added the speed boost to it, as well as, for some reason, immunity to afterburn, for some reason? And a couple of updates before that, but this one still kept it on, where if someone is shooting you, you lose your super cloak. So for, rather than the old, 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 years old Dead Ringer, that you just permanently have the full resistance, um, a couple of years prior, and then they kept it up, they didn't remove it. If you were being shot at, while you had your dead ringer popped, while you were invisible, you'd slowly lose your cloak. And that was a good feature, by the way. It means, basically, if you're a backburner pyro and you see a dead ringer spy, instead of before being able to do zero damage until he ran into a health pack and stood there for 30 seconds, you could just kill him quickly, because you'd do so much damage, he'd lose his super cloak and his resistances, and he'd just be a normal spy. And that's fine also now. If there's a heavy that catches an invisible dead ringer spy, just track him and kill him. If you're a scout and you think you shoot him three or four times with a scatter gun, you'll get him as well. But anyway, this is all aside. They added the speed boost, and at the time, 
No one was really, really too sure what this meant. Um, people thought it might just be, haha, you know, the, the, the Dead Ringer is not going to be that big of a deal. The fact that they've lowered the resistance on it is going to matter a lot more. The fact that it's got a spicicle built in, that must be very strong. And it ended up that the kind of fire resistance thing didn't really mean anything because they also nerfed the degreaser so everyone started running the shotgun. It used to be not 50-50 between the flare gun and the shotgun, but a lot of people did think find it fun and it wasn't... It was alright, it had some situations that you could do really, really good with the flare gun, but they nerfed the degreaser to the point that basically the shotgun is almost certainly better in most situations. May not may not be as fun as hitting all the crits, but anyway, the shotgun meaning that pyros were just shotgun spies, so the fact he has a pyro, a pyro resistance for a bit doesn't really matter. The fact that you lose fire on the initial decloak is nothing new, it's just, you know, you remove all of your status debuffs except for, like, milk and gerati. So if, you know, if you're bleeding or if you're on fire, you lose that, that's always been a feature. So, turns out, fire resistance didn't mean anything, plus everyone still runs it with the spicicle anyway, and if you don't, it doesn't really matter. It turns out that the speed boost was actually a very, very big deal. The downside of the old Dead Ringer, it's really, really loud, and you run at a normal speed. The old spy, 100% move speed, you pop your Dead Ringer, everyone would know exactly where you've gone. If I was playing Pyro, I used to play, used to play quite a bit of Pyro in competitive, if I saw a spy using the Dead Ringer, first of all you'd be like, what? Uh, second of all, you'd just run to the nearest ammo pack and shoot it twice and an invisible spy will suddenly drop dead. It was great. You could track spies so easily. They didn't run away really fast. They had to go to the nearest large ammo pack or they had to pick up weapons off the floor because this was back before ammo boxes and stuff. If you killed a class, you could just pick up their weapon as ammo. They added this only a couple of years ago, but basically you just see miniguns and flamethrowers disappearing as a spy ran over them, and you could roughly guess where they were going, chase them, and kill them really easily. This meant the Dead Ringer was not much of an issue. The current issue with the Dead Ringer is that it just lets the spy run away for free, and he doesn't have to think about it. You used to have to think in your head, okay, I'm playing against a smart player, I can't go to that ammo pack, they'll think I'm going there. So you had to do a little bit of a mind game on the spot, it was fun. And also why it was good with the old Spicicle was you could pop the Dead Ringer and then if a Pyro did see you, you'd quickly flick out and then run straight through the Pyro. And you did know, little movement things you could do to get away. You had to think a little carefully, not... It's not, you know, this isn't uh, doing a quad rocket jump or something, you know, it's a sink. This is trying to get away from a Pyro, but it used to be a little bit harder. A speed boost basically just meant that you could pop your Dead Ringer and run away for free, and it's a really big deal. The worst part about the Dead Ringer, if you get anyone to just seriously sit down and think about it, you say, okay, what's the not most annoying part? It's the fact that it's really hard to chase spies now with the Dead Ringer. You shoot them with a two damage scattergun shot from across the map, and he's gone. He's gone to the other 40 giant ammo packs because he can get anywhere on the map he wants without having to think about it. And that's the annoying part, in my opinion, is that it's brainless. They, they made it so the small tiny bit of thought you used to have to do to counteract the fact that you couldn't just get easy positioning, the Invis Watch is incredibly good. Like, in, in competitive, the Invis Watch is unbelievably strong. You can almost guarantee yourself a pick every single life, and if you're playing Highlander, it means you can basically just drop the Medic, or kill the Sniper, or the Demo, or whatever. It's really good. So the Dead Ring was basically you were giving up easy positioning and an easy frag, for, you know, getting the frag somewhere else, you know, you'd have to use your aim to do really good, or you have to do some really smart disguising, like do a soldier disguise, pretend you're them, and then get the pick. So it had a decent downside. Now it's just, oh, I can just try it over and over and over again, eventually they're going to give up and get a little lazy and then I can get the kill, and it's kind of brain dead, because you're not having to think. You're just kind of hoping that situation goes your way, and if it doesn't, you pop it, you run off, there's no way anyone can kill you unless it's a mad milk scout. And Valve recently noticed that everyone hates the Dead Ringer. This is true. I use it a lot. I have somewhere between 70 and 80,000 uses on my Dead Ringer. I have had it for quite a long time, but that's also a lot of pops. I have like nearly 1,500 hours on Spy. That's a lot of hours. I love the Invis. It's my favourite loadout. But I use the Dead Ringer so much because I'm also really lazy. I like to come home, sit and play some video games for a bit, not really have to think about it. The fact that I could literally just come home after a day of doing nothing but programming and having, you know, you, you kind of lose your brain after you're doing something like that all day. You've, you've been thinking too hard, you've been doing too many, like, puzzles and stuff. You just want to sit back and be lazy. The fact that I could just go in and play, like, Highlander officials without any warm-up or ever having to think about it, just lazily sitting back and letting the weapon play it for myself, is a little bit stupid, especially when Spy is meant to be, inverted commas, the kind of thoughty class. You have to kind of think it through, you have to plan your decloaks, you have to plan your disguises, you have to pick your situations. I don't even... I just, just pick up the Dead Ring and run away. I hated that. I really, really hated it. The fun of the game, 
is that I like playing with my friends, I like playing against the same people, I find the community aspect really, really fun, and the actual mechanical part of the game just kind of disappeared really fast, because the only thing I had to do was kind of just reflex aim with the ambassador and sometimes kill people, and then if I didn't, I'd butter knife them and go, hoo hoo! And that was a little bit depressing. You know, you put all these hours into becoming mechanically good at the game, and then all of a sudden they make one unlock really good, and it removes a lot of the thought processes. And you don't have to think. You don't have to involve yourself in the game. I feel like when you're using the MBS, you have to really think about what's happening. You have to stick your mind into the game. You have to watch people. You have to pay attention to what they're doing. You have to do it with Dead Ringer. And anyway, this all aside, this is all one big anecdote for saying that I used the Christ out of the weapon despite the fact I hate it, and the main reason is the speed boost. So Valve looking at the weapon, looking at everyone kind of disliking it, or not really having an opinion on it. It's not that rare to see people who just don't really care. They nerfed it, which is incredibly fair. They should. They didn't nerf the annoying part, though. What they did was they made it so you can't pick up ammo. So it, what they did was they looked at the Dead Ringer, they thought what was annoying was the fact that you could spam it all the time. Fair. Now you have to wait somewhere between 5 and 10 seconds to use it again. That's a non-issue, really. It's, it's enough. It's annoying. It's not going to stop people from using it, though. The annoying part, I still think, well, is the speed boost. The fact that even if you can't spam it every five seconds, you can still run it of miles away and then hide behind a wall for ten seconds. It just makes it more annoying to use. It does mean that Spy is not going to be coming back at you every couple of seconds over and over and over again for free. It means it's going to happen a little slower, but maybe you spread over a much longer time because the spy's not just going to play gung-ho. He's not just going to run constantly and hope he has a dead ringer charge ready. He's going to have to wait. So it might even make it a tiny bit more annoying, even though it's a nerf. I doubt it, but keep your opinions open on that. What I'm trying to say is dead ringer is very, very strong. It's not the dead ringer itself, though. It's gone from a long time ago. It used to be a feigned death watch. People eventually realised that it could do a lot more than just, oh, I hope he bought my disguise, the fact that you could use it as a damage resistance. This is fine. There's a watch, in my eyes, for the knife, cloak and dagger. There's a watch for all situations, invis. And there's a watch for guns, for Dead Ringer. I'm fine with that. I love that. I love the fact that almost every weapon on Spy is usable. You look at Scout, melees. What are you going to use? You use the Boston Bash or the Atomizer. The Sandman's banned in leagues, or it's worse than a triple jump for free, or the ability to build Uber with your medic or jump really, really high. Look at Soldier. What are the viable rocket launchers? Airstrike's banned. It's too powerful. The Beggars is also banned. And if it's not banned, it's not nearly as good as just the stock, or the direct hit for taking out sentries, or the blank box for letting you stay alive without a medic. No one's going to use the Liberty Launcher. The Cow Mangler's alright in sixes, but it's basically just the stock. Uh, look at Medic. You're only going to run the crossbow. If you're not running the crossbow, you're giving up something on your team. They, re they rely on you healing them at long range and building Uber really fast. You're not going to use anything but the Uber Saw, because the Vita Saw's banned, and all the other weapons are worse compared to the Uber Saw. Look at Pyro. Why is there any reason to use anything but the Power Jack other than just fun? If you're playing in a serious situation, you're not going to be using the third degree. You're not going to be using the back scratcher because it makes everything pain for your medic. You're not really going to be using anything but the degree, sir. Sometimes the stock's all right. They did make it half decent when they nerfed the degree, says Airblast thing, but still most of the time you're just going to be running degree, says shotgun power jack. Maybe the scorch shot if you're dealing with snipers, but it really spies the only class that's got all of his options open. He's got, well, let's have a look at it. Ambi, it's perfectly fine. Revolver, very, very good. Le Ranger, amazing. If you don't want to use your nut, if you don't want to use your gun, the Le Ranger exists to take up the slot and still give you a benefit. Diamondback, very, 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 very strong, and they haven't also touched it, but maybe they will. Enforcer used to be overpowered. It was literally just the stock revolver, but better. <laughs> they got rid of that. It's now just not. It's the one spy weapon that's actually not very good now. Like, if they change it to maybe be like the lock and load, where it's good against buildings, it might have a niche. Other than that, it's just kind of bad. On the knife side, you've got the stock, always been good. Kunai, very, very strong. Eternal reward, a lot of fun to use. And it's also fine in like lobbies and stuff. It's got silent killer on it, so it means you can chain backstabs even in a competitive situation because there's no screams or uh, kill feed icons. Uh, the big earner, not the biggest fan of it myself, but it's for people who don't necessarily like to use their gun as much because it gives you a huge bonus for the knife. Chain stabs, easy, easy stuff. North American spies love it. Spicicle. It used to be very, very strong. It had Silent Killer built in. It made you immune to pyros for like two, three seconds. Now it's only one. It's still really, really good. I like to use it. Look at the watch's side. Invis watch. Amazingly good. It's it's good in every situation. Use it. Cloak and Dagger. If you're a bit more patient or you want to play very safely and calmly, very, very good. The Dead Ringer. Used to have a nice slot as the gun watch. Now it's just the kind of brain dead. You just 
throw away all thought and play and let the game play itself for you. If they were to just, in my opinion, if they wanted to balance the Dead Ringer as someone who's used it and played it in competitive for like four or five years, I have seen every aspect of Dead Ringer that could probably be played in a competitive scenario. Just remove the speed boost and the spicicle. The spicicle thing is completely... It doesn't need to be on there, it's not that big of a deal, but... It's, just, it's a needless buff, really. The speed boost is the single most annoying aspect on it. You can make it back if you really want to, that he can resist all this stuff. I don't think you need to. If you literally just revert it to how it used to be, where you could resist, okay, enough stuff. So, you know, if a soldier jumped you and you were on 60 health, you could get away. That seems fine to me. Because he wouldn't be jumping you if you were using the invis, he just wouldn't see you. And the cloak and dagger, you would have been miles away anyway. Just removing the speed boost would be insanely good. It would make it... Back to how it used to be, where you had to kind of think about what you were doing. You have to plan your ammo packs or play around your own team. It's a watch that means you don't necessarily have to be in their backfields. You can play with your combo or with your own flank members and assist your scout on like CP Steel as a second scout, this kind of thing. It's a cool little side grade and it's kind of just brain dead now. And what they're doing is just making it a little worse, but they're not nerfing the bad aspect about it. Anyway, I've been rambling on for far too long about the same thing. All I wanted to say was, there's a lot to talk about in the Dead Ringer apparently, I have just spoken off the top of my head for 18 and a half minutes about a weapon. I didn't even have anything written down in Word, I've literally just spurted out of the back of my head about this weapon. It's There's a lot to talk about, it's a very controversial weapon, and I feel like I've spoken my case on it. So do let me know what you think in the comment section and stuff, you have your own opinions on it. Personally, just get rid of the speed boost. Make it like the side grade watch that lets you play with your own team or however you like. Don't just make it the mindless weapon that plays the game for you. The nerf I don't think is enough, I think they need to do more, as someone who's played so much with it. Just, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what the update does with it. And, um, but anyway, yes, thank you very much for watching. Do let me know what you think, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.